Welcome to the Wagas Innovation Talks. This podcast offers you an insight into recent innovations in the tech business, driven by research and industry insight. We are talking to researchers and professionals to share their expertise, experience and projects with us. As a think tank and accelerator, we support tech startups and corporations in growing their business. We believe innovation is key to growth and hope to shine light on academic research and experts with real-life industry experience. To learn more, visit wagas-group.com and find all our podcast episodes plus articles and resources to expand your horizon on tech innovations. My name is Livia van Herde, Marketing and Sales Manager at Wagas, and today is another special episode because we have two guests again. I am very excited to talk to Amal Sharma and Chris Pager from Twex and dive into the world of finance. Amal is a financial advisor, manager and partnership investor. He received his education in finance and economics in Paris at the Université Paris Dauphine. He's president of his companies Twex, Veramates and Alpen Design Studio. Twex, Tech World Bankers, is a debt trading platform where acquisitions and trading of all digital assets can be done. Verimates is a Twex venture and came to life after a mouse company was victim to mailing fraud. It offers verified ID emailing systems. And lastly, Alpen Design Studio offers 3D animations. In today's interview, he and Quack CEO Chris Pager will focus on their work at Tech World Bankers. Chris received his education from Crickdale College in Mechanical Production Engineering. He worked in property development and later on in internet solutions during the late 90s and early 2000s. After almost nine years as a startup investor, He now is the Chief Operating Officer for Tech Investment Bankers, based in London. Welcome to the podcast, Amal and Chris. Thank you. It's lovely to have you. Now, what have been the COVID-19 impacts in the financial world in 2020? What do you say? So basically, um, you have seen a shift in the way people are investing in the sense that um, mm-hmm. the majority kept have been keeping their monies at closer to their vest because they don't know what the future will be made of. So many people are just keeping different than waiting. So there's a mass of money on the sidelines just waiting to be reinvested mm-hmm. in the market. And then you have seen a shift mm-hmm. away from uh, private businesses that has happened because private businesses, as we went to lockdown everywhere, so you can't go to a restaurant, you can't go to a, a, to a hotel, you can't go to take or get on a plane. So basically, all of this made that um, if you were to propose such type of investments, people would not go into it presently. Whereas uh, mm-hmm. we saw another shift where people start, started going back to the markets again and investing in stocks, uh, basically. And not all of them, but just uh, the ones that were a, a mostly into the uh, healthcare business. The, all the stocks went up big time for healthcare. And we saw also another shift in the uh, new technologies, new tech getting a boost once mm-hmm. again. So that's basically uh, the shifts that has happened uh, during this past year, which has been horrendous, basically. I see. Then the question is, how did these changes impact fundraising for businesses? So I think the change that's going to be happening now is that people are going to start realizing that life has to go on, whereas it, mm-hmm. it was very, everything was very much on hold. We are realizing that we have to live with COVID. Um, it may not mm-hmm. just disappear with a vaccine straight away. So there will be another shift in the other direction, back to more investment taking place, and I think coming this year. Basically, uh, fundraising, um, you have now an impact where people are buying shares, stock, uh, playing mm-hmm. the stock market, just to try to profit immediately. So it's a, it's a, a look at the crypto world, for example, with a Bitcoin going up and down, a yo-yo happening, people yeah, buying, selling, yeah. getting in and out. 
and everybody profiting, take, making mm -hmm. a profit immediately. That nobody will hold on the long term because as many businesses will not be able to earn any money and pay any dividends, you're having a big problem there. So you can't just sit and hold and wait to, to earn a dividend. You just have to come buy and sell. That is why we developed our product to, uh, to, to, to take care of that problem. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, are investors more reluctant to invest in private companies nowadays? What we have seen is a big yes. Uh, literally, uh, private companies, mainly startups, are having difficulties to raise money uh, because uh, there is a fear that they might not be, be here tomorrow. And that is a problem. But now with the vaccines coming in, now that we are 2021 February, uh, vaccinations uh, campaign are ongoing everywhere. Uh, we, can, we can start feeling a little bit of optimism creeping back in the market. That, that mm. we felt. Yeah. Mm. But um, the rest, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit like last, last year, but getting better. Right, right. And uh, Chris, what do you say? Yes, I agree completely. I think, the, as Amar said earlier, the, the, there's a lot of money floating around. People are being sat on it, and mm -hmm. they realise that there's no good keeping it there. And let's face it, mm -hmm. banks are, are going to be charging people to have money in their account. So they need to start making investments. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are relying on the returns, which they're not going to get from dividends at the moment, um, to, to, for their income to supplement pensions, or mm -hmm. in many cases, to actually give them an income at, at all. Mm -hmm. So I think people will be starting to invest. They'll be careful, but they'll be looking at innovative new ideas and new ways of investing that would give them returns. And I think the private sector business of business is an area that should be and will be exploited in the coming months. Right. So our podcast is all about innovation and we love hearing about newest trends. What are the latest trends and how do you see the future of business financing? And what do you say? Well, business financing is going to change a lot in the sense that um, people will, will say, okay, where your industry, what is your industry and how likely it is for me to make money in that industry. What I mean by that is, for example, uh, if you own an airline company right now, um, your shares, nobody wants them for the time being because uh, you, you're not flying, you are almost going bankrupt. Right. You, same thing goes for a hotel or a restaurant. These days, those, those are toxic investments, basically, and that's the way people are looking at them. Whereas if you were to come uh, in a, uh, in a uh, healthcare uh, product uh, into mm -hmm. renewable energy, into things where basically, look, if we are going back into another lockdown or whatever, mm -hmm. the two things that we will need will be healthcare, we need it no matter what, and electricity energy. Mm -hmm. So basically, those are two sectors that will thrive no matter what because they, we, we need those things. Without that, we can't survive. So basically, that's the, the approach that's going to happen. And you will always have the type of pe one type mm -hmm. of the people who would want to try to get 10Xs because uh, they, they think that's still feasible. Unfortunately, that's less and less feasible in these markets in the end time. Now you have to play it a little bit long term uh, because uh, without giving time for people to do things, um, nothing will happen. And I know there is a big fear mm -hmm. of the time, what can happen to an investor, what can happen to a promoter. Uh, a, 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 has he died of COVID, for example? You know, So uh, a, 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 what, what's going to happen if the chain of command in that company breaks down and the, uh, the main guy dies mm -hmm. there? Who's going to take over? Me, my money, who's going to give it back to me? What happens? So those are all genuine concerns that are... Uh, unfortunately, plaguing people's mind these days, and that's a big problem that we that we have we are seeing that as a big problem. Uh, I'll give you one example for that is yeah. we have uh, a, uh, a a Burger King franchise, three of them flagship uh, locations in Marseille in France that are uh, trying to raise money. Problem is in France, all restaurants, hotels are closed. Mm -hmm. You you can't you can't eat out, but you can do takeaway. You can do takeaway. As you can do takeaway, uh, they are still making money. 
but not as much as they would have made in normal regular time. When we have, we want to go. When we we approach investors to say, "Hey guys, mm -hmm. you want to put to participate in that?" Invariably, we had, "Yeah, we understand that they are doing takeaways, but the problem is they can't open their doors. So mm -hmm. why should we give the money now? Maybe we wait till till they can open their doors, then we'll get into it." So we are we are finding out that there are many situations where no matter how good the business is, because people will always eat this type of fast foods, so they will always eat that and uh, conveniently uh, bad eating habits or whatever. <laughs> we are going to do that right now, right. But, but that will always thrive. It's a business yeah. model that will always make money. So basically, even in those type of businesses, money is not flowing in. So you 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 are finding out that there is a humongous shift. On the other end, we also have another client who is manufacturing a a, uh, a drug that has been already FDA approved and is now going to come on the market in, mm -hmm. in the in the EU. And these guys, their valuation went up from 30 million to 360 million uh, in a matter of months as soon as they got approved by the FDA. And that like that's like mm -hmm. 10 times your your share value in not even 45 days, you know. So uh, and mm -hmm. basically there, why? Because it's healthcare. And it's going to work. And besides, okay, they, they have got almost something else going on for them mm -hmm. because many people who, who suffered COVID afterwards, they have got uh, plenty of bowel problems and uh, the medication takes care of that. Uh, so basically, it's, it's something which is to stay, yeah. unfortunately, and, and that will not pass overnight. So mm -hmm. uh, when you look at, at now, when you step back and you look at these two situations I've given to you, both in real life should be interesting. Mm -hmm. but one not overly so more than the other, except that here you are finding out that with, with people's frame of mind and that worldwide, it's not only in the US or in Europe, it's really around the whole globe. What you're finding out is that these people are coming in and saying, wait, healthcare, yeah, COVID is, is taking care of it. Yeah, let me, let me go for it. I want that. The other one, food, yeah, but they can't open. Oh, there's takeaway, but it doesn't matter. They still can't open now. We can wait. Let's wait and see what happens. Mm -hmm. That's that, mm -hmm. that, that, that's I guess the best resume I can give you on the market approach that we are seeing at our level. Of course, other people might see other things, but us that's what Yeah. Yeah, well, that was very interesting. Chris, what do you say? What are the latest trends? Do you have um some some insight? <laughs> yeah, I think that the food thing is really important because everybody's yeah. got to eat. And we have a there's another business which is a restaurant they are they have innovatively gone into the takeaway business it's a business mm -hmm. they've not been in before unlike burger king the burger king which has a a drive through um and they've gone to the takeaway model and believe it or not they're probably making more money at the moment than they were when they were open as i said because they've, they've obviously got reduced costs but you know everybody has to eat it doesn't matter whether you're a supermarket or a farm shop or a restaurant. If you work, if you work it well, then you're going to make money, and, and people who invest into these businesses will make money at the moment, which is strange. And then the other part, the other side is real estate. Real estate is obviously very important. It always has been, and repurposing of um, a, a, of property, maybe from the commercial to the residential is something that will grow quite definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's very important giving people more space and more options to, to, to work and live as, as they wish. Moving on to our last question of this podcast episode, you are offering IPSOs. Could you explain what that is? The IPSO stands for basically Initial Preferred Shares Offering. It's a concept that we have invented and that is uh, uh, it is our way of doing business, of trying to uh, tackle the problems that we are seeing on the markets that we have been discussing for the past uh, uh, minutes. So um, what it gives, it enables people to mm -hmm. invest in companies while uh, looking at the upside rather than the downside. Let me explain what I mean by that. If you were to buy on the market, you were to mm -hmm. invest into mm -hmm. shares. You will have shares of the company. Let's take an example of, the, of a company going bankrupt. When this company goes down, basically, you as a shareholder, you are the last to get paid when the assets are sold. All the debts are queued, you are the last to get paid, and no. sometimes even to be called upon 
when you are a founder of shares or whatever. So that's a, it's a big problem. True, if this company, like I, I, I told about the, the pharmaceutical company uh, in the US one, uh, having 10 X's in valuation in a matter of months, uh, you can earn money that way. Yes, you can make big time money. But you also big time risk because if ever that company, that same company you invest into, mm -hmm. the FDA comes back on them and take the 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 uh, approval away or whatever, you might find yourself in a situation where you don't have plus 10x but minus 10x. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's to try to sort out and 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 make things real for people and protect them, protect investors. We decided to say, look, let's use what we call it mm -hmm. what is called a preferred share a preferred share is a special type of shares that gives you no mm -hmm. equity in a company no voting rights meaning you are not a shareholder of the company you can't mm -hmm. say anything there but it gives you a first lien on all of the assets of the company mm -hmm. in case of bankruptcy so you get paid first so which is of course very interesting in the sense that something goes bad. Mm -hmm. You know that the first typewriter sold, uh, the money is coming to you and not to uh, the uh, whoever the, the debt was was uh, was due to and whatever. So you get paid first. That's the first thing. Secondly, of course, we all look at the worst case mm -hmm. scenario, but we don't want to think about worst case scenario. We want to think about positive, and we are in in uh, we are all of us in it to make money. So basically, what means that how do I benefit from it? Because if just being covered yeah. is my game, uh, maybe I'm, I'm, I might not invest. I might go to the post, post office and then put my money there or whatever, you know. So and maybe I make zero point five percent and leave it at that. So don't take any risk. So what we ask our uh, uh, our mm -hmm. a, uh, clients, people listed on our exchange, what we ask them to do is basically. Look, we were going to list your debt with us because he said we are a debt private a private debt exchange. So we list your debt. Of course, it's tokenized in the sense that to expedite mm -hmm. trading, we are we are using blockchain technology in order to go fast and to reduce cost for trading. But the thing is, a company that will come with us, they are going to list their debt. That debt will be represented with free instruments. By instrument, I mean the following. I mean, there is going to be a sort of token to pay mm -hmm. back the capital. And those, there will be, let's say, a company comes to you and wants to pay back over five years. So you will get five years, five different tokens maturing each at, a, at their specific dates, at the prescribed date. And where it is worth a fixed value, you know, in, in uh, ahead of time, how much you're supposed to get paid on what date. So that's for the capital reimbursement. Then you have got another token, which uh, will be representing mm -hmm. a profit participation. Because me as an investor, I want to make money. That's why I invest into your company. Okay, You are, you are trying to alleviate my risk by diminishing right. it, uh, yeah. by making me a preferred shareholder. Fantastic. But I'm still in it to make money. I don't want to think about the worst, yeah. even though yeah. I'm covered if the worst were to happen. But how do I make money? Yeah. So basically, what I'm doing, me as a company, I'm going to offer you mm -hmm. from 15 to 25%, depending on what type of business it is and, and what is being made, of the profits before taxes. That's what I'm going to offer you as return uh, on, on mm -hmm. your investment. And that's payable every year and uh, either quarterly or semi-annually or monthly, depending on the type of businesses, businesses you are running. The cash-rich businesses can afford to pay quarterly or even monthly and the other type of businesses might want to pay only semi-annually or annually. So that's on that side. And then what we offer on top of it, what we ask our clients to give to the investor, we ask them to pay them 1% of sales generated by the company. What does that mean? Uh, I, I might be making sales, but I'm not mm -hmm. profitable yet. If I'm not profitable yet, I cannot give any percentage of profits. But while you as an investor who helped me to get there, yeah. and I'm, I'm now, I'm fr I, well, I'm supposed to thrive later, but I've, I, you helped me to get started. I need to reward you for waiting. And the reward is whenever there is a sale, 1% of it is coming back to you. So... Until the time that I stop making money with the profits, mm -hmm. and then you get both until you are taken out, meaning that 
or your capital is repaid back and then everything is merging and terminated and you're, you're good. Me as a, as a entrepreneur, as a, as a business owner, I find myself in a situation where, yes, I got access to public money because that's the public out there giving the money. Yes, my assets are, are all blocked in their favor in case of bankruptcy. I get that. It's, it's normal. Uh, yes, I have to pay 15, 20% of my profits or maybe even 25. Uh, but then why, it's normal because if not, why would they come to me if I don't, I don't reward them handsomely? Because they're taking a risk on my dream. It's not their dream. So I have to mm-hmm. give them these people. And yes, I have to, pay to give yeah. that 1% yeah. of total sales that I'm generating in order to keep them happy while they, the profit starts. But then all of this, there is a, an end date to it. The end date is prescribed by me based on my capacity to reimburse the debt, based on what I assume in my business plan will be my march uh, towards mm-hmm. profit profitability and capital repayment. And I say, yeah, I need six years, I need seven years, I need five years, whatever it is, to pay it back. That's what I take as time. But after that time is over and I've paid it back, I've got nobody there. It's, they are good. I don't, I don't owe them anything anymore. I, I don't have shareholders. I don't have dilution of my capital. I don't have any of these things. So that's basically what is an IPSO, initial preferred shares offering. Mm. And the way we structure it for people, when, when, for people, for clients, uh, companies listing with us, when they come in, we will go ahead and uh, yes, approach sir. the US SEC in order to get their offering registered in order to enable us to approach accredited qualified investors, of which we have about 6,000 that we, we know, mm-hmm. and uh, whom we are going to contact and say, hey, guys, look at this business. Here's a, a link to our site with a video presentation with the, uh, the, the of value proposition. Check it. And if you want to get in, in a call with the promoter, let us know. If you're interested, please come on in. So that's uh, mainly reserved for big ticket investors. Uh, minimum investment in that case will be 25,000 uh, and above. So they will come in, check it out. Then as we are allowed to uh, accept up to 100, 150 people uh, from each EU country uh, as non-accredited, they can come in too and invest any amount they want. Maybe if they, if they want to invest 100, 200 euros, 300 euros or whatever, they could do it potentially. And there we have a counter from each country uh, because we are not authorized by our licenses to go above 150. Um, also, the other thing that we will mm-hmm. do for this client is that as soon as the documents or uh, the, 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 the potential to uh, approach accredited qualified investors around the world is given by the USACC, as soon as we have that, we will prepare a, pro- a legal prospectus we have got a legal department uh, and uh, we we use it in order to prepare that prospectus Mm -hmm. and that prospectus will define mostly all the risk factors meaning that you as an investor when you come in uh, you need to know what are the risks what you're getting yourself into how you could lose your money so you and then you can make an educated decision to say yeah Mm -hmm. i go for it or no too much risk i'm out of it so basically, it's really up to you. But you have all these disclosures. You can take a look right. at it and go for it, knowing right. that, uh, yeah, there are industry risk and specific risks pertaining to one specific company. So you have to go through all of that and make, make your, your own mind and see if that is interesting for you, if the rewards being offered uh, can outweigh the potential risk, that's up to you. We will give you our, our indication, of course, of what we think, because when we list them with us, we think that they are viable deals. That's why we list them on our exchange. So anyway, uh, and then uh, once that is that has happened, the prospectors have been prepared, uh, that we'll be able to find online on, our, on for each company that is listed with us. We also acquire QC penalizing numbers uh, which are basically identifiers that enable the people there to identify a security being offered and then uh, a, 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 a no, it is there and trade it. And uh, that's a unique number per country, per issuer uh, that is being issued. So, uh, and then of course, um, yeah. a, we go to the fundraising, uh, uh, um, to the fundraising part of the transaction. 
that's uh, that's basically in a nutshell what is an IPSO. Amazing, great, Chris. Do you have anything to add to that? Yes, I think the uh, that's a, a fairly in depth explanation. But the, the the key benefits really for both borrower, so our client and lender or investor, is that firstly the the business itself gets its money, which is the key important thing. As we said at the moment, it's difficult, but and the re- the reason why it's happening is it's it's in a very simple format, which is debt. But instead of having a fixed interest rate, the business uh, proposes from the outset how it would would like to repay these monies that are are being lent mm-hmm. to it. So that the inve- so that, which means that for one for for that client, they know that they can afford it from their projections and of, of growth, etc. And it it means from the investor's point of view that they know from the outset exactly what benefit they're going to get, i.e. what profit they're going to make on their investment going forward. And this this makes it, because it's an attractive figure, it's more attractive than, say, you know, 7 8% straight interest. Um, and it's so it's good for them. And they know from the outset when that's going to be and what, and what it's going to be which means that they grow with the business. So as, as Amal said, the initial sales payment they receive is, is at the very early stages if the business isn't, isn't going, it, it has to go through an initial growth stage. And they get that benefit of the revenue share that's coming through with that from that sales. And then as the business grows and becomes profitable, they then get the full benefit of yeah. that. So it's much better than having just straight equity and potentially dividends, which at the moment are very uh, difficult to to achieve, um, with a bit of the pre-profit um, payments being being proposed and made, they're likely to make more money than they would do if they invested in different ways. So it's advantageous both ways, mm. and it works well for both investor and uh, and and borrower. Um, there is also the benefit that the invest any of the investments in part can be traded, can be sold if the investor wants to get liquidity back into their investment quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, details of this are, are all available and discussed. So it's probably best not to go into it now, but it means it basically it means that it's granular investment and it's, it's, it gives a lot of flexibility to what's happening. But the benefit is it works. It's a win-win situation for both investor and and our clients. That's great. Amazing. We've reached the end of our podcast episode. Thank you for your insight, Amal and Chris. It was a pleasure to have you both on the podcast. Thank you, Livia. Take care. Thank you, Livia. You can read more at wagas-group.com. This has been your Innovation Talks podcast produced by Livia van Herde. Make sure to check back next month for the latest insight in innovation.